Catholic family. Saint Rose of Lima, following the path of the cross with a cheerful heart. Here comes Super Alex. Two seconds to go. Everything depends on this last attacking play. The tension here is incredible. Super Alex steps up to the three-point line and... Watch this, girls. Uh. <laughs> you missed, Super Alex. Wow, great shot. <laughs> yeah, I think you should stick to collecting basketball cards. <laughs> It's not fair. That was gonna be the winning shot. Hey guys, have you heard the news? Mom and Dad got me a dinghy. What? A real dinghy? Uh, of course. Let's go down to the river to try it out. Right. Well, first we have to blow it up. And we should ask our moms and dads. Then let's go. There's no time to waste. What is it? Sergio's got a new dinghy, and we're going down to the river to try it out. Are you going with a grown-up? No. Well, I'm not sure about that. The river's dangerous. But we're going down to the pool, where kids go swimming. It's not dangerous. Well, if that's where you're going, OK. What's that? It's an image of the Most Blessed Virgin. I can see that. But what's it doing here? Did you buy it? No, it's a traveling image. It's going from house to house so that all the families in the parish can pray with it. The day after tomorrow, we're taking it to Sergio's house. I see. I'm just about to go out and cut some roses to decorate it. Why not come with me to the garden? Sure. Mom, are there any saints from America? <laughs> well, of course, there are plenty. And which one is the most important? All of them are important because they are all with God in heaven. Okay. So who was the first saint from America? Saint Rose of Lima was the first saint from the Americas. She's the patron saint of Latin America. Saint Rose? She's named after a flower. Yes, that's right. Was she a member of a religious order? No, she was a secular saint. The patron saint of Latin America? Yes. Well, I thought that the important saints like, um, Saint, um... Well, you know, the patron saints of important things. I see. You think the great saints were all members of religious orders, don't you? Well, now you know differently. Lay people can and should be saints. There are great secular saints like St. Catherine of Siena or St. Thomas More. You mean lay people should be saints as well? But that's really hard. Being a saint means loving Jesus very much, loving your neighbor, and going to heaven. That's what God asks of us. I guess it doesn't sound so difficult. <laughs> With God's help, we can all do it. This book is great. It's the story of the patron saint of the New World, St. Rose of Lima. A woman? Yes. It says here she was born in Lima, the capital of Peru, in 1586. Her mother and father called her Isabel. Hold on, hold on. You mean they called her Rose? No. It says here they called her Isabel. Then you've got the wrong book. No. Maybe they called her Isabel, but everybody else called her Rose. That's ridiculous. Hi, Mom. Hi, girls. Mom? Was St. Rose called Isabel? Yes. But then why is she known as St. Rose? Well, I'll explain. When Isabel was a baby, she was cared for by a servant girl. One day, the servant girl went to check on Isabel as she slept. And she thought that the baby's face was so beautiful, it looked like a rose. You're as beautiful as a rose. I'm going to call you Rose. Her parents liked this name, so they decided to call her Rose. And did Isabel like being called Rose? We don't really know. But Rose is such a pretty name. Yeah, but it wasn't her real name, though. It's as if everybody called you Petunia. <laughs> Petunia. I wouldn't like being called by another name at all. Well, girls, I really have to get going. 
I've got to put the shopping away, clean the house, make dinner, wash the breakfast dishes, do the laundry and the ironing. Phew! I don't think I'll have time to do it all. Oh, well. See you later. Your mom works really hard. Yes. When she was telling us all the things she has to do, I felt tired just listening to her. We ought to go lend her a hand, don't you think? Yeah, but... I don't feel like it. I'd rather stay here and read. Look, it says here that St. Rose was a very beautiful young girl. She had blonde hair, and her mother always dressed her up very prettily. Once, her mother put a wreath of flowers on her head to make her look nice when they had visitors. And Rose stuck a single pin through the wreath to do penance. Another time, one of her mother's friends paid her compliments. Rose, darling, you've got such beautiful hands. Look at them. Like an angel's hands, aren't they? Yes, I've told her over and over. You should thank God for making you so beautiful. And so, you know what she did? I don't know. Did she go around showing off her hands so that everyone would admire them? No, she didn't. Quite the opposite. She rubbed mud on them. Why did she want to hide how pretty she was? I don't know. It seems she didn't like being beautiful. She wanted other people to think she was ugly. I don't understand it. Me either. Hey, Mom? Why did St. Rose want to be ugly? Yeah, she didn't like people telling her how pretty she was. Well, St. Rose said the important thing wasn't outer beauty, but inner beauty. What does inner beauty mean, Mom? It means having a pure soul in the eyes of God. Being a good Catholic? That's right. Being a good person. St. Rose wanted inner beauty, and she didn't care about the outside. When she was ten, she sometimes fasted, eating only bread and water. That's all she ate? Some days, yes. She ate very little, and she didn't put salt on her food. But food doesn't taste good like that. That's what St. Rose wanted. In her life, she wanted to accompany Jesus on the cross. St. Rose always said that the path of the cross was the only way to heaven. And she did all of that when she was only ten. Just like us. That's right. God likes us to make an effort to be good Catholics in little day-to-day -day things. I'll put some stones in my shoes. That way my feet will hurt when I walk. That's what St. Rose of Lima would do. Hello, Sarah. We're going to visit a lady who's sick. You coming? Okay. Is something wrong? No, nothing, nothing. You're acting strange. Is everything okay? Yes, yes, I'm fine. It's like your feet were sore. Sarah, you're really starting to worry me. All right, all right. I've got students in my shoes. What was that? I didn't hear you. I've got stones in my shoes. You've got what in your shoes? Your shoes are too tight? I've got stones in my shoes. Then why don't you take them out? I want to do penance like St. Rose of Lima. I want to suffer like Jesus suffered on the cross. But Sarah, you don't need to put stones in your shoes to do that. Oh, no? But I read that St. Rose put a pin in her crown of flowers. Yeah, and some days she only ate bread and water. But God's not asking you to make that kind of sacrifice. He's not? You see, the sacrifices that God asks us to make are everyday things, like helping out at home, even if you don't feel like it, working hard at school, even if you find it boring, being a good friend, that kind of thing, doing your duty, but doing it cheerfully and offering it to God. In that case, can I take the stones out of my shoes? <laughs> of course. What a relief. I'm glad God isn't asking me to do that. Don't be so sure, Sarah. Oftentimes, being a good Catholic in day-to-day -day things is harder than having stones in your shoes.
right, Sister Patricia. I think I know what to do. I'll help my mom at home. I think that's a great idea. You know, she has so much to do, she must get really worn out. I'll help her and offer that to God. These things are precious in the eyes of God. Oh, that's great, Sarah. Thank you for washing the dishes. You know, Mom, I want to be a good Catholic just like St. Rose. So I've decided to make little sacrifices that will help you with the housework. I think that's wonderful. What you're doing is a great treasure in the eyes of God. St. Rose of Lima was very devoted to St. Catherine of Siena, another laywoman, because she thought that their lives were very similar, but her parents wanted her to marry. You must marry, my dear. Darling, you are a beautiful young woman. You will have many suitors. And you will have everything you need. Find a good husband. Mother? Father? You know that I want to dedicate my life to God. You can dedicate your life to God and be married too. I know, but I believe that God wants me to dedicate my life only to Him and to the poor. Are you saying you're going to become a nun? I don't know. Perhaps. Mother, you know that for a long time now I have wanted to enter the convent of the Augustinians. Give me a sign to let me know whether this is the will of God, because I intend to go to the convent now to ask to be admitted. Uh huh. What's happening? I can't get up. At that moment, Rose seemed to turn to stone. She couldn't get up. She called her brother Hernando to help her. Hernando, please help me to get up. I can't move. It's impossible. You're too heavy. Oh, my heavenly mother. If God does not want me to enter a convent, I will give up the idea this moment. I will not go to the convent of the Augustinians. At that moment, Rose stood up. It's a miracle. Rose kept on asking God to show her her vocation, and she began to see a black and white butterfly every single day. So she decided that she had to find a religious order that wore a black and white habit. Which was it? The third order of St. Dominic. She entered the order just like Catherine of Siena. She finally found her vocation. That's right. She finally found out what God wanted her to do. Well, now I have to take the clothes out of the washing machine. Can you take care of Nicholas while I do it? Of course, Mom. You sit there. You can play while I read you the story of St. Rose. From that moment onwards, Rose lived in a little hut she had built in her vegetable garden next to a shrine. That sounds like fun. She lived in a hut. But wait, listen to this. On her head, she wore a silver band that was studded with spikes in memory of the Lord's crown of thorns. <laughs> she didn't wear a bucket on her head. She wore a crown of thorns. St. Rose spent all her time working in the garden, and in the evening, she did embroidery. She did all this to earn money for the family because her father had lost his fortune in a mining venture. Wow, so she worked all day long, just like Mom. Can't go to the river. 
Okay. I'll tell the boys. Huh? Nicholas went off somewhere. I leave him with you for a second and you lose him. I'm sorry, Mom. Come on. We'll soon find him. He can't have gone very far. Nikki! Look! I think we found him! Hey, you little troublemaker. Don't you go running off again, okay? Mom? Paula is sick and she can't go play in the river with the dinghy. I'm sorry. Me too. What are you gonna do? I'm going to tell the boys to go down to the river another day. Are you crazy? No way! We're going down to the river this afternoon just like we planned. But Paula can't make it. Yeah, so what? You're being selfish. Uh, I mean, honestly, what's her problem? Right, the girls can go some other day and that's that. Visit Paula? And miss the first ever dinghy ride? Out of the question. Visiting the sick is a beautiful work of charity. We should see Jesus in the sick. Listen, I'll tell you something. Saint Rose fitted out a room in her house so she could attend to the poor and the sick of Lima. People stood in line outside her door. Rose, dear. You can't turn the house into a hospital. There are people everywhere. When we work to help the poor and the sick, we serve Jesus. We should never tire of helping others because we can see Jesus in them. Very soon the news spread all over Lima and people began to think of Rose as a saint. But some people didn't like it and they reported her to the Inquisition. But why? She wasn't doing any harm. No. But she was different from other people, and some people thought that was strange. So Rose was tried by the Inquisition. My daughter, you are a good woman. And you say you have never studied theology. No, Father. Everything that I know of God, I learned through reading the Gospels and through prayer. This is incredible. You've never studied theology, and yet here you are speaking of God with such wisdom. You may continue your work with the poor and with the sick. You are a treasure of the church. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll stay with Paula. I'm so pleased. Hello. Hi. Didn't you go down to the river with the boys? No, I didn't. I'm going to stay with you. We can go another day. Isn't this annoying? I guess. Now, girls, when things in life don't turn out the way we want, we have to accept them cheerfully. St. Rose of Lima said that the cross is the only way to heaven. She said, let them be on their guard against error and deception. This is the only ladder by which paradise is reached. And without the cross, there's no road to heaven. Hey, we have to stop and rest. Oh, okay, this dinghy weighs a ton. Ugh. Maybe we ought to change our plan, huh? Why? So that the girls can come. I feel bad. I think that's what St. Rose of Lima would do. Forget it. Didn't the saints ever have any fun? What is it, boys? Paula's sick at home. Sarah's with her. And we're going to the river. And so what's the problem? Well... The girls wanted to come with us, and they can't. I see. So why don't you leave this for another day? We can't do that. I think that St. Rose would leave it for another day and go visit Paula instead. St. Rose was a girl, and she did girl things. Hey, hey, that's not true. Let me tell you a story. One day, some pirates were planning to attack the city of Lima. And do you know what St. Rose did? Did she fight the pirates? <laughs> no, she didn't. Listen. 
she climbed onto the altar in the church of Our Lady of Rosario, and tearing up her clothes, she prepared to defend Christ in the tabernacle. Those pirates will have to kill me before they profane our Lord. I will fight them if I have to. So she did fight the pirates. Well, she didn't have to, because mysteriously the pirate captain died on board the ship and his men never attacked. Wow. Yes. In Lima, the people credited this miracle to St. Rose, and that's why very often she's shown in images holding a city suspended from an anchor. This is her. She was really brave. You know what I say? I'm not going to the river. I'm going to go see Paula. Okay, I guess you're right. We could take her some comics. But we only have superhero comics, and Paula is a girl. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Then we'll take her superhero comics. Hey, you two. Hey, I thought you were going to the river. No, not now. We decided to wait for Paula to get better. Huh? Are you serious? Yep. Thank you. And we brought you some superhero comics. What you've done is very beautiful. Well, it's what St. Rose of Lima would have done, isn't it? I think so. I was just telling the girls that one of the most important moments in St. Rose's life was the mystical marriage, which took place on Palm Sunday in 1617. Rose was 31 years old, and she didn't have long to live. St. Rose was at the chapel of Our Lady of Rosario in the Dominican convent when she heard Jesus calling her. Rose of my heart, I want you for myself. Before you kneels your humble slave, I am and always will be yours. So Rose asked her brother Hernando to make her a ring. This ring was placed on her finger by a Dominican monk on Easter Sunday. Did the ring mean that St. Rose was married to God? Well, yes, you could say that. It meant that Rose belonged only to God. She became sick and spent the last days of her life at her godparents' house. Her illness caused her a great deal of suffering. Lord, increase my sufferings, and with them increase thy love in my heart. Jesus, Jesus, be with me. And that's how St. Rose died. You know, Sister Patricia, I want to offer my little illness to God. It'll be like a little cross. That is a great treasure. Hi, Mom. Hi, Sarah. How's Paula feeling? Well, I think she's a little better. We'll all be able to go down to the river soon. Do you want me to help you feed Nicholas? Thank you. That way I'll be able to iron the sheets. I want to help you with these little jobs around the house. Thank you. You're very grown up and very responsible. I learned that from St. Rose. That's great. You know, when St. Rose died, people crowded round the door to her house. They all thought that she was a great saint. 54 years later, she was declared a saint, the patron saint of Latin America.